Hello, good day. Today is the fourth, I uh, mean, sorry, um, sixth Sunday in uh, Easter time, Easter season. And uh, we're, I do believe that's so, even though I have the wrong thing up here. Okay, and the first reading is the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 8 to 4, I'm sorry, verses 5 to 8, then skipping over to 14 to 17. The Samaritan Jewish sect was considered counterfeit or fake Jews by the Jerusalem Jews, who felt that the Jewish law could only be fulfilled in the temple in Jerusalem. For Philip to bring Samaritan Jews to belief in Jesus as the Messiah was a great spiritual conquest. Although they were baptized in Jesus, Apparently, they showed none of the charismatic gifts associated with the presence of the Holy Spirit. So the apostles in Jerusalem sent Peter and John to administer what we call the Sacrament of Confirmation. Then going over to this wonderful reading of uh, John, uh, I don't have the whole thing down there, but at any rate, uh, uh, ch chapter 14 let me look to see what verses are there. Okay, uh, no, it's John, uh, not chapter 14, but rather, uh, yeah, chapter 14. Oh, I read the wrong thing. Verses 15 to 21, I think that is. Okay, uh, this gospel is just filled with so much. It has a symphony of complementary concepts or ideas. First, to love Jesus means not only to have a deep affection for him, but much more importantly, to love and obey his will and his commandments. Later in John 15, verse 10, he says, If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. With Jesus, love and obedience, and obedience are intimately connected. You can't have love, just the feelings of affection, and just do whatever you want. That is a no-no, completely so. And then in John chapter 15, verse 12, he says, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Well, he's not obviously not referring to the Ten Commandments, but rather to the second of the two great commandments, which he changes from love your neighbor as you love yourself to love one another as I have loved you. Now, first of all, the first term, the uh, old and uh, love your neighbor as yourself interpretation, was the neighbor was traditionally understood as one's uh, fellow countryman, not the foreigner. So you didn't have to love everybody from the traditional understanding, just your own fellow countrymen. Secondly, the matter of what we ought to do is what God does. That is certainly New Testament thinking. As I understand what Jesus is saying here is to love us what God loves. That is, love others and yourself as God loves all of you. Let me say that again. Love others and yourself as God loves others and yourself. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 48, verse 48, Jesus said, so be perfect. Just as your heavenly Father is perfect, so God is the measure of all things. There is growth or development from the Old Testament or Old uh, Covenant to the New. Secondly, when we have the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, living within us, we accept the life that he is giving us as our life, our life force. We are to say, we are said to know him, that is, have an ever deepening spiritual relationship with him and thereby, thereby with Jesus, 
who reveals himself more and more to us through the Spirit. Jesus said in this gospel, on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. I presume that the words, on that day, refer to the day when we receive the Spirit. Thirdly, God the Father has a special role as he works hand to hand with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Once we show that we want to grow in loving Jesus by loving his will, God our Father sends his Spirit to aid that growth. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves us by enabling us to grow in holiness. As God is holy to the extent that God has given us the capacity to be holy. Well, we're to be perfect as God is perfect, but God has an infinite capacity to be perfect. We have a limited capacity because that's what we got from God. Okay, then going to the uh, second reading, which is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 to 18. In this section on Christus, Christian suffering, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 15a, just taking the first section there, uh, so it states that, Now, who is going to harm you? If you are in, uh, enthusiastic for what is good. Actually, I'm including some other verses that are not in your reading. Now, who is going to harm you if you are enthusiastic for what is good? And even if you should suffer because of righteousness, blessed are you. Do not be afraid or terrified with fear of them. But sanctify Christ in your hearts. That last line is in the first line in our reading. In other words, uh, focus in on the Lord who is in your heart so to find strength and uh, take you away from whatever or whomever gives you fear. Can't be that. In 1 Peter, now this is a part of our reading, uh, chapter 3, verses 15b to 16a, it continues, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. It's asked by people around you who are, don't live in hope. Uh, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear. Be un that is to say, be understanding and kind to anyone who questions you for your otherworldly behavior hoping to move them away from a worldly behavior or attitude. Then the, the last line in our reading, what is awkwardly stated in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18b, put to death in the flesh, he has brought to life in the spirit. I believe it is better stated as put to death what is of the flesh by suffering in the flesh. Bring to life what is in the spirit. That, that's my own interpretation, of course. Perhaps a good summation is what John chapter 15, verses 18 to 19 states. A little uh, addition from later on uh, from our gospel reading. If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Jesus expected us to be persecuted as he was persecuted. 